Welcome to my YouTube channel, Homeopathy Super Sessions by Dr. Chavos. Today I'll be doing a small topic, that is theory of chronic disease. Again, it's a request from one of my subscribers to do something about the theory of chronic disease. Now, since this is a very vast chapter or a very vast topic, I've just taken one point because I really don't know what my subscriber wants from the theory of chronic disease. So in this video, I have done how Dr. Hanneman came to the theory of chronic disease. Well, Dr. Hanneman was practicing homeopathy for nearly 30 years. During this period, he found out the patients were coming back to him with some of the complaints. So Dr. Hanneman was, practic was practicing successfully for 30 years. And he found out that in spite of being cured, they were again coming back with the same complaints. In other words, the patients were not cured properly. So Dr. Hanneman started wondering why this had occurred. Being a logical thinker, he put up five points which could be at fault. So as you all know, his father, Dr. Hanneman's father, when Hanneman was small, he used to be locked up in a room and his father used to give him a question to solve. And in the evening, the room was opened up and the answer to the question Dr. Hanneman had written down. So right from childhood, his father had taught him how to think properly and precisely or logically. So therefore, this came to use and Dr. Hanneman put up five points which could be at fault. Now let us see what are these five points. First, the law of similar might not be of universal application. Second, the number of drugs proved so far were too less to cover up all the symptoms that affected the human beings. Third, there was some defect in the application of the law. Fourth, there was some defect in ascertaining the totality of symptoms which constitutes the disease from the hemopathy point of view. And lastly, the fifth point, there was some obstacle, the persistence and non-eradication of which would delay the healing of the chronic disease. So these five points were there. So one by one, Dr. Hanneman started logically reasoning out each point and he found out the fault in certain points. Now let us see a little bit more in detail about each of these points. Dr. Hanneman dismissed the first point on the grounds of validity of the law of similar. He said it was based on observation and explanation and was supported by inductive and deductive process of thought and reasoning. So the law of similars it is not only based on inductive logic, but it is also based on the inductive and the deductive logic or the inductive and the deductive processes of thought and reasoning. Here again, it's a misnomer saying that the law of similars is only through the inductive logic. No, it is wrong. It is both inductive as well as deductive. Aphorism number 17 to 26 or 25 will tell you the deductive process of the law of similars. And furthermore, this law was based on exact observation, correct interpretation, rational explanation, and scientific construction of the observed fact. Dr. Hanneman also argued that this law was also observed by nature to bring about the cure of the natural disease. So he dismissed the first point. Regarding the second point of the scarcity of homeopathic drugs, he found the solution whereby many new drugs were proved and added to the homeopathic material medical. So as you all know, Dr. Hanneman is lifetime, he has proved 99 drugs. So in spite of adding more drugs to the armament of the material medica, there was the problem remained the same. So addition of new drugs, however, did not advance the healing of the chronic disease. So again, the same problem occurred, patients were cured, again, they came back in spite of increasing the number of homeopathic drugs. So Dr. Hanneman, disregarded the second point also. Now the third point, regarding the third point, he came to a conclusion that there was no defect in the application of the law. Why? Because the law of similars was based on both inductive and deductive reasoning and the law also followed nature in its cure. So the third point also was taken out. Now regarding the fourth and fifth point, he came to discover a new fact. He found out that the non-venereal chronic diseases, after being removed homeopathically, always return in a varied form with new symptoms. So 
the non-venereal diseases, which form the majority of the seven, eight of the, all the chronic diseases, they, after being cured, they again used to return with some increased intensity of symptoms or with some varied symptoms or with some new symptoms. Or it also re re reappeared periodically with the increase of the complaints. This fact, or rather this new fact, led him to conclude that while treating chronic disease, homeopathic physician not only has not only treated the disease presented before his eyes, but he has always to encounter in a separate fragment of some deep-seated original disease. So basically, whatever we, whatever we are seeing in practice, it's just the tip of the iceberg. We have to go much deeper into it and see, fathom the depth of the disease and see where is the origin of the disease. That is why out here I've written that Physician not only has to treat the disease presented before his eyes, but he has to always to encounter it as a separate fragment of some deep-seated original disease. So the root cause of the disease has to be has to be identified. All the isolated attacks of the particular syndromes are not many disease, but expression of one continuous progressive morbid process which constitutes the disease. So whatever peculiarity are there or whatever symptoms are there expressed by the patient and which goes on in a progressive mode, it is actually, the origin is only from one particular disease. Thus the law of similars was not at fault, but the defect was in ascertaining the totality of the symptoms. So out here, point number four, that there is some defect in ascertaining the totality. The totality on a wider base was comprising not only the present symptoms, but also the past symptoms. So you have to take also the past history of the patient into consideration, especially the suppression of skin eruptions. Thus, Dr. Hanneman was led to think of the existence of some obstacle, which after its development and advancement could never be removed from the body by the strength of any robust constitution. So therefore, Dr. Hanneman thought that there was some obstacle or there was some hindrance in the cure, which, uh, which, uh, in which the disease went on developing and it went on reoccurring. And it was difficult to remove even from the most robust constitution. That is the fifth point that there was some obstacle. This obstacle to cure of, of many cases were found out after repeated case taking and prolonged observation of non venereal patients. So what did Dr. Hanneman do? He went through all the case records of all the patients which were non venereal in nature and he found, and he found something peculiar. So he found, he found that there was, there was a past history of some skin eruption or the itch eruption, which was suppressed and that hadn't been taken into account. So the obstacle was in a form of an itch eruption. It was frequently forgotten and the beginning of all the subsequent illness was dated from that time. So basically, initially, in his initial days of practice, he did not take this into consideration, but later on he found out that in most of the cases, which were non-venereal in, uh, in origin, they were suppressed, especially the skin symptoms were suppressed and all the complaints were dated from the time suppression took place. To be more precise, the patient suffered under the stress of the suppressed eruptions. These eruptions were made to disappear by faulty application of medicine or which had disappeared from the skin by some other means. So either if you read the introduction of, of Organon by Dr. Hanneman, he has mentioned that the applications of mercury, lead, and zinc were used to, to drive away the skin lesions, or even the water baths of the sulfur baths were used, which was which was quite in vogue during that time. Patients used to have these uh, have this water bath of of sulfur which, uh, in, in which sulfur was, was present and miraculously the skin lesions used to disappear. Or also a cautery, a cautery of the skin lesions could have been done either in the olden days by using chemical cautery of copper sulfate or silver nitrate. So the medicines, the eruptions were, were, were I mean, were made to disappear by applications by faulty applications of the medicines or by some other means like water. This was followed in person otherwise healthy by a, by a same or similar symptoms. To this, Dr. Henneman gave a general name to the obstacle retarded cure. So he gave a name retarded cure 
to this the term sora was defined in venereal cases after repeated case taking and prolonged observation he brought out the following facts so now about the venereal uh, venereal skin disease or, or rather the venereal cases which constitute only a minuscule of the disease that is only one eighth of the chronic disease were venereal in nature and seven eighth were non venereal in nature so in the venereal cases he found out that there was a history of exposure with ulcer formation on the gland penis or a pus like discharge from the urethra so the former that is ulcer formation on the gland penis he coined the word syphilis and a pus like discharge from the urethra after the latter he named the word psychosis thus the, the fault was in point number 4 and 5 so the fourth point is what there was some there is some defect in ascertain the totality and the fifth point is what there is some obstacle the persistence and non eradication of which maintain the disease so out here after, in all these five points the the fault lied in the fourth and the fifth point combined so something about a little bit about sora the word sora in the english english dictionary means an itching skin disease or the itch mite that is pathologically it is the sarcoptic scaly historically the word sora was derived from the original hebrew word sore it means a groove a fault a position or a stigma so this the word sora has come from an hebrew word known as sore which means a groove of fault or pollution or a stigma that means whenever sora is affected it will leave some residual effect in the body in the form of a groove of fault or pollution or a stigma dr hanneman gave sora a special form as i quote an original disease condition which does after its completion of the internal affection of the whole organism announces itself by a peculiar cutaneous eruption accompanied by voluptuous itching so whenever the original disease is the cause lies internally that is the soric miasma and when it is activated it it is activated in the form of this peculiar skin eruptions with voluptuous itching so therefore you have to not only see the tip of the iceberg but you have to see more deeper into it the root cause of the disease this is how dr hanneman arrived at the theory of chronic disease i hope you like this video if you if you if you think this video was beneficial to you please give it a thumbs up kindly do share comment and like the video thank you very much